That was an ugly bounce for Pritchard and uh, a good bounce for the Japanese. He finds his touch. I like the way they're thinking though at least. You know, tactically they're thinking, well look, it's not, you know, we're only 16, 70 minutes into this game. We don't need to be trying to run up from everywhere. Let's play a little bit of field position. Let's put the Canadians under a bit of pressure. Let's test their kicking game. So 17 minutes gone. The throw didn't look too straight, but uh, the Japanese play on, but turn it over, and uh, the Canadians with the big kick, one bounce and then the touch. Well, that was an opportunity begging because Bryce Robbins was running a fantastic line off the back of that line out. We'll just have the... a look here, uh, how close was Robbins to away to just running and scoring that underneath the yeah. post if he had a collect Absolutely, the cover would not have got him. Again, the quick line by the Japanese. They love it at the front. It just doesn't give them attacking ball onto Robbins. Thompson, their go-to man in the line out. Ben Darwin has alluded to his line out skills in this tournament. Well, they've set up very close to the line here. And they just want to get out of the 22, and their inability to kick out of the 22 has been a big difficulty for them. This will be a box kick. Well, it was meant to be a box kick. The spoil there coming from Mike Burak, but uh, and in the process, Burak knocks it on, so the Japanese will have a scrum. And in, a, in a way, that's an advantage, though, for the Canadians. Sometimes you get a scrum that's so dominant that even if the opposition makes a mistake, it's of advantage to you, and it is here for the Canadians. You're going to put some genuine heat on here. Just a penalty. Just a penalty. Roger. So a penalty brewing here. Touch judges on the field. Captain and two. Let's have a listen. Number two. Two. Focus you. Careless use of the arm in the clean out. Okay. Be careful over there. Just yep. the penalty. No more. Okay. No more. Yep. Well, Reardon's been frustrated. He's been off his line in terms of his throws, and he probably just wants to put a little bit more effort in, and he's gone swinging arm into the clean out. The, the, they're going very hard at the counter ruck, the Canadians. I think they see it as a great opportunity for them. So the Japanese looking for their first Rugby World Cup victory since 1991 when they finished on top of Zimbabwe. It's been a long time between drinks for the Cherry Blossoms. John Kerwin desperate to put one on the board in Bordeaux. Go ahead! And come back to the left. The pass way out in front of Aruga. Yoshida, Lomanu, kicks and chases. He's got some speed too, Lomanu. The ball beats everyone. Showed some great speed, the big fella there. Out sprinted Pitchard. Admittedly, Pitchard had to turn and chase, of course, but still, good option. And again, the field position, good opportunity here for the Japanese. So the Tongan born Japanese winger. Racing the Australian born Canadian winger. The ball beat them all. That throw to the front, well taken there from Rod Snow, but the referee. Five metres. That's just silly. Didn't, didn't go to five metres. Really throwing that kind of throw early in the game. This is a we give up. You know, your defence is too good for us. That's not true. The Canadians can hit their targets pretty well. Got them in a pretty bad position here. Well, not thrown in five. Well, the Japanese setting up for something here, Yoshida receives the move as Bryce Robbins called it. Now Robbins, the okay, platform midfield. Now to the left comes Aruga. He's met in a bone cruncher from John Teal. Lamanu waits on the left. And the Japanese will get the scrum. John Kerwin, their coach, actually was in charge of the Italian side in the Rugby World Cup of 2003. They played and beat Canada in that tournament. So he knows what it feels like. He'd just like to do it again with the Japanese. Well, at this stage of the game, you'd say the Japanese are on top. If, uh, they're playing Crouch. the right type of game. They're kicking well to the corners, which has been an aspect of the game Touch. that's been some difficulty. Pause. We talked about the mindset of the Japanese, and I would have said for the first 10, minute, ten minutes they weren't on top. Endo scored that brilliant try, and now they're full of beans. Opportunity again. Robbins went himself. Still they go right. Yoshida. Dummy steps back inside. Crawls another metre. Miachi lends his weight. 
Sabaha flings it out to the right. Robin steps. A half chance. And a penalty conceded. Robin's okay, isolated. Okay, okay. You said it there, Rupert McCall isolated. That's where they get themselves into some difficulty when the ball is stagnant and they just, uh, when they then hit the D line, the Canadians are just big men and they're able to get the turnover or the penalty. Just over a quarter of this match gone, 5 0 Japan as Mike James taps it down. For his flanker, Colin Hughes. Ukes, James and Burak all play at French clubs, so they're no stranger to rugby in this part of the world. Williams sends it out to Burak. Go ahead, Stephen. Sloppy for Williams, but he does well. And Smith. Williams snipes left. The winger is Vandermoer. DTH lays it back. So Spicer stands in at fly half, finds Craig Colbert, hits it back on the angle. The Maple Leafs not going anywhere at the moment. Seven, leave him. Seven red. Well, this is where we see if they're a smart team or they're a silly team. Trying to set up here to either kick to the corner or build some momentum through a quick recycle, which they get now. Down the blind they go, but the pass inside wasn't able to be taken, and so the turnover ultimately occurs. It's, it's high risk, Ben Tune, that kind of scenario to try to get that recycle. Maybe kicking to the corners would have been a smarter option for them. Yeah, look, neither of these teams can afford slow ball. And unfortunately, neither of them are efficient enough at the breakdown uh, to get themselves quick ball. So okay. they're stuck. They're stuck in this 22 situation. Well, Ryan Smith, the Canadian fire has in a bit of trouble here. He copped a very good hit right under the rib cage, and it at least winded him. Gets to his feet. Gets a round of applause. So the ribs of Brian Smith, no more, no more. Rattled, quite rightly pointed out by Bill. He shakes off the cobwebs and goes again. Touch, ball, go! Yoshida accepts the pass from his captain Miyashi and the Japanese. A couple of passes and the kick from Anishi. That scrum feed was straight, I'll eat my hat. It just seems like something the referees have given up on this year that's not focusing on it all, and basically a second row feed is pretty comfortable for them. Imamura was the left footer that found touch for the Japanese. And Riordan plays on quickly. Stolen from Thompson, four, five, but four, the referee five, not happy. Numbers. Yeah, that, that tactic of the Japanese I find a little bit bizarre because they have the scrum and then threw it back about 15 metres to kick it out pretty much exactly where the scrum was on the other side of the field and so it's a line out, Canadian ball, bizarre. They play on quickly, the Maple Leafs, Carpenter hammers it forward. To the left, Smith, he's recovered, Colpin finds the defence. So once again, Canada look to get something happening here. Riordan. The Japanese defensive line hard to crack thus far. Burak. And the penalty to Canada will be a welcome relief. Played on quickly. Williams. Fundamua crashes out of a few, gets up and goes again. Down the blind they go, but there's plenty of defence there to take John Teal. And well, the pass from Ryan Smith to the touch judge. Probably wondering why the bloke outside wasn't calling for the ball, there wasn't anyone. I don't, 
I don't feel the Japanese are going to be able to keep this line speed up for 80 minutes. And, and I think the Canadians are aware of that as well. And I think they, they feel if they can just keep hold of the ball, they're going to tie this defence out. And they're going to be able to, to uh, come home well over the top of the Japanese. Yeah, the Canadians seem to be employing a, a very typical, what you'd call, exhaust pattern, where you just continually go the same way, the same way, the same way. Literally go all the way across the field, really trying to make the Japanese defenders come to fold around each ruck. And as Ben Darwin mentioned that, Typically, that can be very tiring for a defensive team to do. But again, it's pointless unless your execution is spot on, which it hasn't been for the Canadians. So the Japanese prop, Tomokazu Soma, okay. Okay. receiving some attention yeah, for okay. a head knock. Those Let's wondering, go. that last line out, um, the, the Japanese had more in defence than the Canadians did. That's why there was a free kick against the line. them. Stay in the line. Always got to have the same numbers as each other. From the Kobe Steel Club, Masabara finds Miyashi. The crowd acknowledge the skills of the Japanese. They look to drive it. Makiri trying to get something going in a forward direction. Charge down. Williams did well. The Canadians now an opportunity. Riordan picks and drives left. Push back. Hold there. Hold there. Here they go with that pattern. They're just going to continue going the same way until they run out of room, which they're getting dangerously close to running out of room. Urak to James, second rower to second rower. They're certainly looking to attract a lot of Japanese defenders out on that left hand side as the rain falls in Bordeaux. Williams. Robbins, Culpin. Good defence once again from the Blossoms. This is Rod Snow. Not going anywhere, particularly in a hurry. Williams this time. DTH does the job but turns it over. Yoshida picks it up and scrambles forward. Masabara. No. Rugby's the ability to shift the point of attack continuously. The Japanese, uh, sorry, the Ch Canadians were um, attacking straight down the middle, had an opportunity to send it through nine, and then went five phases. This, uh, you know, from this play, they should just pick and go and pick and go and shift wide, could have scored in the corner. Well, that's the second time now Yoshida's been on. too slow to get on. his box kick away. Right there. The Canadians have been on him a couple of times now, and they've caught him napping. Playing on. So there's music and excitement in the crowd. The rhythm not so good for the Canadian side, and but for that try from Kasuke Endo for the Japanese. Both teams looking to get something happening, something consistently through the phases as the kick is charged down from Robbins. Smith back inside the Spicer. Williams once again goes to the left. We've seen that pattern from the Canadians this afternoon. The ball was out. Jonathan Kaplan indicated as such. Williams this time gets his hands on it. Throws the dummy, goes himself. He's slippery Morgan Williams. Carpenter. Constructs the platform for the Canadians. Wait there. It's Mike Burek. Eight on the speech, all right. The frustrations continue for the Maple Leafs. I think the Canadians have got to try a different tack. They've tried this now four times and they really haven't made the yards they've needed to. They, they're coming up hard in D and they're getting the, the, um, the big knockdowns, but realistically this short side continuous pattern isn't working for them they're turning the ball over the japanese d looks pretty settled from that perspective yeah they've obviously got in their heads that they really want to play the japanese through the forwards and dominate that area of the game first but you're right that they're not they're not executing very well because a couple of times now at the breakdown they've been pretty ordinary so a couple of japanese players there receiving treatment the prop nishiura who scored against the fijians his first test try last week 
and also their skipper Miyashi. Thompson, the go-to man, but uh, that throw not straight, Ben Darwin. Yeah, it was, it was, the timing was good. It was straight to two at the front, but unfortunately just throwing across the line. And there's nothing wrong with playing through the forwards, Junior, but at the moment they're, they're doing it pick and go. Maybe they should do it one pass out and engage the second or third defender. Crotch. These sides have played each other 17 times in the history of their rivalry. Japan currently lead nine games to eight, so can the Maple Leafs even up the score 